with landing uh, scheduled about 25 minutes from now. We are now hearing uh, the uh, beacon, a familiar sound uh, from the Soyuz vehicle that sends out uh, navigational uh, information uh, between the Soyuz and the uh, search and recovery forces at the landing site. All guys, how are you feeling? What was the re-entry time? All ties. Copy. How can you copy? How do you read us? Copy. Unintelligible. Five seconds. Yes, we're going for five seconds. What was the maximum GLO 3.9? Copy. Communications has been restored uh, with the crew as we stand by for shoot deploy, reporting that their maximum G-forces were just under four Gs. There is our first uh, view from the landing site, television from the landing site showing all-terrain vehicles uh, in position. The temperature is in single digits Fahrenheit. As we uh, await the arrival of uh, the Soyuz vehicle, you can see that the skies are uh, somewhat overcast. On this uh, December day, it is Thursday morning at the landing site, uh, just before 11 a.m. Kazakhstan time. This is Mission Control Houston. We're still awaiting confirmation of landing, but uh, you can tell that uh, some of the ground vehicles uh, obviously are heading in a direction that would imply that the uh, Soyuz has landed. We're again, we're standing by for confirmation. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, the Russian flight controllers at uh, the Russian Mission Control Center have now confirmed that they have a visual on the vehicle. It has landed in a vertical position. It is upright. So uh, the Soyuz MS-09 stuck the landing on the eve of the 50th anniversary of humankind's first voyage to the moon. A multinational crew returns to Earth after spending more than a half year in space. Gary, we're now getting a video uh, of the extraction process, and we see uh, what you've been talking about as the first crew member uh, is pulled uh, out of the Soyuz. This is uh, probably the Soyuz commander, Sergei Prokopiev, if they follow uh, the usual procedures of getting uh, the first crew member out from the center seat of the Soyuz. And uh, we, uh, our understanding is, is that the temperatures are in the single digits Fahrenheit there, so uh, not uh, the uh, not the most ideal day, uh, sporting conditions for this uh, time in December. Tell us what you're seeing, Gary. Uh, it is indeed cold, a, a little light snowfall. But Sergei Prokopiev currently, with a smile on his face, waving to the personnel here on the ground, uh, being assisted by the Russian specialist down the slide. Seems to be in good health. He still has a smile on his face. Of course, it was a long journey coming down, and this is the first time he or the hair from the earth in 197 days. Being carried... Okay, we may have lost uh, Gary uh, through his satellite uh, phone, uh, but you're seeing uh, the video of Sergei Prokopiev uh, being placed on one of the chairs uh, just alongside of the uh, Soyuz spacecraft. And uh, we'll be standing by here since we're getting live video from the landing site uh, for the other two crew members to be extracted. Gary, you were in uh, one of the uh, first helicopters to take off from Jezkazgan for the landing site. 
Uh, could you see uh, from your vantage point in that helicopter the Soyuz under the chutes before it descended into clouds? Uh, Rob, unfortunately not. Uh, the various media were all positioned uh, right on time uh, for the landing here uh, in the uh, afternoon of, or I'm sorry, the late morning of uh, their landing today. Uh, it looks like uh, Serena on and Chance are now being extracted from the vehicle. We weren't able to see those chutes deploy. I'm actually standing right next to the chute right now. Again, uh, perfect landing. This uh, saw you situated upright. Uh, Serena on and Chance are now being extracted. Not far from its intended bullseye target, with landing uh, occurring at uh, 11.02 p.m. Central Time. And there is Serena Onan Chancellor having wrapped up her first flight into space with video back from the landing site. And Rob, I can confirm that uh, Serena Onan Chancellor being positioned in the right of the three seats here. Of course, Sergei Prokofiev already in the middle. Uh, Serena Onan Chancellor now positioned in the right medical personnel covering her up from the frigid temperatures that we are experiencing here at the landing site this morning. And we're seeing uh, the NASA personnel, flight surgeons, Russian uh, nurses, and other personnel uh, around her. Uh, this is uh, a typical scene uh, as the crew members are bundled up against uh, the uh, frigid uh, conditions. But uh, nonetheless, uh, Onan Chancellor with a smile on her face, having wrapped up 197 days in space. Step behind the line. And we're getting views of Alexander Gerst. Okay. Smile on his face, waving to the personnel here situated on the ground. Uh, back on the ground after 197 days in space. A record holder for European Space Agency astronauts for a total duration in space. Uh, now being aided by the Russian personnel uh, down the slide structure. Uh, of the, uh, the next two, the uh, Russian specialist here, and being carried over to the last of the three seats situated on the left here uh, in front of the media. He'll undergo his series of medical checks, of course, similar to Procopia and on Chancellor, and have a chance uh, here at, soon after to be speaking with uh, family to let them know that they, from their own voice, that they are here safe and sound on the ground uh, here in the steppe of Kazakhstan. And uh, Alexander Gerst, uh, with uh, the completion of this mission, you can see the big smile on his face. 362 days in space, almost a full year in space for him, more than any other European Space Agency astronaut in history, having eclipsed the former record set by Tomas Reiter of 350 days in space for a European Space Agency astronaut. Okay, put the head on, cover him up. Alex, can we put the uh, devices on? Thank you, you too. <laughs> you look good. All three crew members are now out.